Hello, I'm your host, Reminate Princess. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Here we have I Regret OnlyFans Part 3. Okay, let's go. I hate OnlyFans. I hate it because I think it is just another example of the gig economy. Yeah. Um, and OnlyFans has shown time and again that it is happy to quit to, you know, kick sex workers to the curb, mm. you know? So here we are, like, giving money to a fucking platform that doesn't even care about us, doesn't want us, will get rid of us for its own relationships with, you know, Visa and MasterCard and stuff like that. And I I also think it's a it's a true distraction from more important issues at stake. So I think it's putting hyper visibility on online sex workers. I mean, obviously online sex workers, like I'm not saying that they're not sex workers and don't mm. face their own forms of like stigma and prejudice and stuff, sure. because they obviously do. And especially being face out is really difficult. I understand that as someone who's also face out, you know, you can have children taken off you in custody battles. You can be denied entry to America. You can have all sorts of things happen yeah. as a result of being face out. So I'm not saying that they don't face stigma, but but they are not facing the same things that in-person sex workers are facing. Miami have released a new video of a violent confrontation between a popular social media model and the boyfriend she's now accused of murdering. A warning, this might be disturbing. The video was recorded in an elevator at the couple's apartment building two months before the deadly stabbing in April. Prosecutors say it shows 26-year-old Courtney Clenny beating her live-in boyfriend, Christian Obumselli. She was arrested this week in Hawaii. Her attorney says the killing was in self-defense, but prosecutors claim the boyfriend was the victim of ongoing domestic violence. Here we have a OnlyFans model who allegedly killed her boyfriend. This is really sad to hear and a part of me questions why would a man allow himself to be in that situation and there could be loads of reasons why it could be money it could be that mommy life who really knows but majority of the times we don't hear a lot of these things that happen behind the scenes when a man is in a very toxic relationship most of the times they won't really say it they'll probably just accept it and that kind of comes with this role of I'm the man, I can take it, I'm in control, you know, she will soon submit to me. Whatever it is, sometimes there is this delusion that the man is in control and can be able to have control in the future over this woman that he's with. When really the best thing to do is to walk away and report her. The thing too, like women don't understand, like the, the thing that sucks about women is that if, if you're a hoe, right, it's going to, especially in today's day and age, the digital age, that shit will follow you. And you know who's going to suffer the most? Your fucking kids will, bro. Kids, that's right. Yeah. The kids are already starting to get bullied right now with girls that have OnlyFans. Dude, I saw your mom's ass on OnlyFans. That's going to mm. fuck kids up, bro. Like, the people make it like, oh, look at your mom on the internet. Oh, oh. And I guarantee you in the next 10 to 15 years, we're going to see a lot of that shit. Girls think it's, oh, it's a harmless bikini picture. <laughs> okay. Right now you think it is. And then 10, 15 years from now, when you have a family, all other shit, and the kids are sharing pictures of your fucking mom's bikini picture, that was, what are you mm. going to tell Tommy? When he's like, mom, mom, there's so many pictures of you when you're before. <laughs> Ew, mom. <laughs> Truth is, they really don't care about that. Because in their mind is when I make this money and I'm able to provide for him, he won't care about that. And he will have the finances to be a better man and build this and build that. That's all they really see. They ain't thinking about what he's going to go through because for them, the cost and the amount of money they make will be able to heal whatever damage they're doing to him. But that's not really the case because money can never deal or heal with any of the damages that you have caused yourself eternally and eternally for your children what you would hear is i'm doing this for my children i'm doing this for my son i'm making sure that he has a roof over his head so they will use that as an excuse for them to continue doing what they're doing because they're able to provide when really they won't come to terms or admit the damages that you're going to do to their children in the long run that's something they'll just have to see for themselves to really actually believe it. Rude Awakening, I had an OnlyFans. Okay. For a month. I started just posting lingerie pictures. Okay, what people don't realize is that you're being programmed in that app because they're asking you for more. Just lingerie? No, take your top off. No, no nipple? Are you serious? 
And then you have the DMs. And through DM, you can say, like, I'll send you this video if you pay $200. Uh -huh. So you pay $200, I send you the private video. Yeah, yeah. So throughout the one month that I did it, I just didn't like it. Like, I just started getting guys like, hey, if you sell me a private picture, I'll send you $3,000. I'm like, maybe I won't do it the first time, right? I won't do it the right. first time. But let's say a year from now, I get asked this question how many times. I'm already programmed into being like, like think of how many thousands, think of how many thousands I would have made. Where's the line? Where's Where's it's new, then it's new. Where else would you go with this? I paid $10,000 to meet up. That is what I'm telling you. go on a date, whatever. That is what I'm telling you. Know? You get lost in it. Like You might start, like I said, you start by just setting the picture. And then you end up $10,000 for meeting up and then $20,000 to have sex. And, and now you're a prostitute yeah. and you didn't even notice how you ended up there. Have you ever thought of OnlyFans? No. I don't have facilities for that. They'll be like, oh, 12 year old boy. Oh, that's really sweet. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way. Do you like way. my skin and bones? My like, mum would literally. beat the shit out. If I did OnlyFans, my mum and dad would beat the shit out of me. Would they? Yes. I don't know how much. Yeah, I'm no not sure. Way. I think I'd get in trouble. No way. My mum has only just found out that I talk about my on the internet she's not she's not watching like your videos that. no i banned them both really my parents post mine on their facebook my oh. mum posted my <laughs> one on Love her that. facebook they were like yeah look how funny our daughter is no my mum's like, like my promoter like but she doesn't realize what she's doing like i've got old family like i've got old family we're at a funeral the like other day. blowing the dust yeah, off yeah yeah she was like yeah so um if you tune into the saving grace podcast every wednesday it's on youtube uh, spotify <gasps> and apple and i'm like mum 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 you can't do that you, mm. you dare they're gonna yeah. tune into the l brooks one and be like what the fuck reality is you have some family that condone it and will see past it because even if they don't want to accept it or don't want to be a part of it their children is already a part of it and have already accepted it for their life and so you have some mothers that have been part of that life, so they don't care if their children's part of that life. And you have some parents where they can't really control their children, so they just let them be. And that's the mother that posted her daughter's picture on Facebook, because she probably is over it, probably can't control it, and probably is also kind of living through her daughter as well. You get that. And then on the other side, she is quite open about what she does on the internet but she doesn't want her family to really know about how open she is with her promiscuity her lifestyle on the internet because she doesn't really want everyone to know the type of female that she really is so when it comes to families this is why it's important to grow up a certain way because you have some parents where they've been a certain way and they will allow their children to be a certain way this is why a lot of times guys they won't just marry anyone they won't just have a child with anyone you know they complain about why is this person not picking me and etc etc well this is the type of family he doesn't want to have he doesn't want a mother who will allow her daughter and post it on facebook for everyone to see he doesn't want to get into that scenario because if she already practiced these values, then this conversation wouldn't even exist for them. They wouldn't even be a part of this. And even so, the ones that do grow up being a part of it and their parents don't agree with it, that's a whole different story because now the child is just spoiled. At the end of the day, society and feminism is normalizing this type of behavior and either the parents are involved or not involved they getting dragged in it too i just eat what i want and they pay for it as long as i film it so that's how i make a living and keep going and it makes me feel appreciated so i'm happy to do it hi long time no see everybody people ask me all the time when is going to be that cake video? Well, it's right now. Thank you for requesting this. It's making me bigger and bigger. I can just feel it. My mom's self-image really improved. Welcome to the internet, where you find the weirdest and disgusting thing and somehow they're making money off of it. This is the dark side of it, where this is normal this is what people like these are other people's kinks people are paying her to ruin her life while watching her do it oh, am i surprised no
You know, Connie, I think I have a theory about why you're such a bitch. Excuse me? Brian, let's just go. No, 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 no. Hang, no, hang on. Hang on, Meg. Hang on. You see, Connie, you're popular because you developed early and started putting out when you were 12. But now you can't stand to look at yourself in the mirror because all you see is a whore. So you pick on Meg to avoid the inevitable realization that once your body's used up by age 19, you're going to be a worn-out, chalky-skinned burlap sack that even your stepdad won't want. How's that? Am I in the ballpark? <laughs> Stop playing with me. Stop playing dumb with me. Stop playing with me. Yes, I'm D-Rock. I'm D-Rock. You know, uh, yeah, you know now. You didn't know. You, that's who that's I'm D Rock, the one you've been DMing on uh, OnlyFans for the past week. Look at this shit, man. I'm sitting at the house the other day while she's talking about, oh, I'm business meetings or I'm hanging with my friends. You do a meetup. There's nothing to explain. There's nothing to explain. You are the man, I don't give a about no more. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to hear none of them excuses. You and this motherfucker in a whole fucking bikini or some shit it's about to try, try to do meetups. What the fuck are you doing? Let me ask you, what are you doing with these meetups? Because you didn't know this was me. That's me you've been talking to for this whole past week. You've been coming. Listen, coming home. You've been, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. You've been coming to the, I'm not trying to hear none of that shit. You've been coming home, laying in the bed with me, acting about none of that crime, none of that shit. You've been coming home. Listen, I don't, you've been coming. You've been coming. No, because that shit crazy. you be coming home every day, laying with me and doing all that shit the whole time. You're doing meetups and shit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I cannot wait to hear this. I was recently told I have very pretty feet. So, you know. All right. Well, that was... Okay. All right. Guess that's not going to work. Guess we'll stick with trauma-informed breath work. Then. So, basically what happened was... Obviously, I knew about the OnlyFans. Um, but I wasn't promoting it anywhere. So, I didn't know that anyone could find it. Um, and I started this new job. And I was there for a week. And everything was going really, really well. And then on the Friday, the last day, I went home early because I was really sick. And two hours after that, I get this text message from my boss being like, um, um, the courier is coming to pick up the phone, my like work phone. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? Just like I sent you an email. And I couldn't find the email. Finally found the email. And yeah, there it was written out. It was basically saying like... Your position's been terminated for this reason, this reason, this reason. Um, she claimed that I lied, like she because she asked me that morning, which I did find a little odd, but not very odd because I have a swimwear line, like or I had one. She sent me an email asking if I had any side businesses or any like self-employment of any type, and I said no, I don't, because my swimwear line is now like inactive. Um, obviously, I didn't realize she meant only fans like why would I put those two together um but I didn't think it was weird um and I should have known then but I to be honest I didn't really care I was on day five and I was calling my friend being like I'm depressed what do I do so I'm just like chilling I forgot to mention it was actually really funny because she attached some screenshots of my only fans like babe that like, you don't need to send me that I know what I've posted Thanks though. I hope you enjoyed the free content. Or did you use the company card to pay for that? Like I was actually like, who paid for that? Did she, she put on the company card? Does that just go in the sundry account? Like what? What makes me laugh about only fan models is they will go about their business and go from one job to another job, the normal job, not the only fans job. And they will tell their employees, the management, nothing about what they do. And they will just expect it just to slide through. And that's the problem, it's like, you need to be prepared for whatever is to come. If you decided to do something that you know is not really accepted in the conservative world or business world, wherever it is, then shouldn't you tell your employee or management so you know how to be able to do whatever comes next? But what they do is they choose to hide it because they know that there is consequences behind it. They think they can just do what they want and get away with it. Instead of just coming clean and actually figuring out how to get through it. So I was dating this guy, kind of rich, and he asked me out of the blue, would you date a struggling guy? Mm -hmm. And I said, no. And he said, you know, to me, you're the struggling guy. I haven't healed yet. <laughs> wow. Fam. Plot Her twist. world would have been rushed. She felt wined and dined. And in that setting, yeah. she doesn't understand why she's being attacked. Yeah, yeah, fine. She doesn't understand. Fine. I'm just here for food and give you 
Fatty. Fatty. That's all I'm here for. So I was deep. Sky Wheatley has opened up about her views on OnlyFans this week. Appearing alongside Michael Finch in his most recent vlog, Sky admitted she was fuming about the platform. Like I'm fuming. About what? Like just saying like, oh, you know, I I, I like to make my money by approving in a product and loving a product organically and sharing it with my audience rather than fucking myself with a fucking dildo and making money off and and like and like ending marriages you know how many girls would go through their boyfriend's phone and see that they're secretly subscribed to girls only fans and that's the end of a fucking marriage right there Following backlash regarding Sky's comments, she revealed the conversation was never supposed to be shared. In a now-deleted comment, she wrote, This conversation was never meant to be posted. I'm so upset it's been posted online. This was out of my control. I was having a conversation with a so-called friend out of anger. Shocked it's been posted, to be honest. Trust no one. For one thing, this is not a video I even wanted to film. I've kind of been avoiding it, and I'll explain why I've been avoiding it. But also, I know that I need to make it because... It's so important and it's everywhere now. So we're gonna talk about OnlyFans. A little bit about me. I have never had an OnlyFans, but I had a Patreon account. I was 22 years old at the time and I had been on social media for around five or six years already. And I had made tremendous strides on social media. I had many opportunities um, that most influencers would dream of. But unfortunately, I didn't have the income to show for that. I was kind of freaking out. And I was relaying this to somebody that I was friends with. They had told me that I should try out Patreon. That being said, I did not fully grasp what I was getting myself into. I had created the account with the exclusivity purpose of posting photos and posting videos that I wasn't going to post anywhere else. I had created the Patreon account and I made the profile picture, a picture that I liked of myself that was in a bikini. <sighs> That being said, I created that and a lot of people were under the impression that this account was going to be more. And when I say more, I mean like OnlyFans kind of content. And I had a bunch of people that had subscribed to it, obviously, with that intention. When I found out that that was the intention, I kind of felt like my back was up against the wall. And I have a bunch of people that subscribed to something that I wasn't willing to give. I never posted any nude photos on there, but I did post bikini photos and lingerie photos and just like the poses and stuff were just... Um, not the best. Though it wasn't nude, I'm not proud of it. Posting like that is something that I now have to live with because I'm an influencer, but also even when you're not an influencer, whatever you post online, we all know it's there forever. I don't know why this made me feel the way that it made me feel. I don't know if there's other people out there doing this, other girls or even guys doing this that don't feel anything about it and don't feel how I felt, which was ashamed, which was worried, or I don't even know why, embarrassed. Um, the fact that there was all these guys that I don't know looking at me in a way that I only want one guy to look at me that way, you know, which is the guy I'm gonna marry. Yet I was showing that to people that I don't even know for financial security, which is why so many girls are doing it and which is why it's so popular. And I want to make this video because it took a piece from me. I don't want to say that this was the reason that I found Jesus. It was definitely part of me hitting rock bottom. And I can't tell you how thankful I am that I hit rock bottom because I would have never felt like I needed him. Don't do this. I know that everybody else is doing it. I know that it seems like such an easy thing to do to take your clothes off and take a picture in the mirror and show a bunch of random people that don't know you, those parts of you, but it will take a piece of you and it took a piece of me. But luckily that piece was filled with the love of Jesus. I can't express to you enough that money will never fill any of the holes you think it will fill. And I really pray that hearing my mistake and hearing how it affected me, I pray it helps you to make the right decision and not create one of these accounts. This is what gets me. She's so comfortable to say that I don't know why I posted it. I don't understand why I posted it. I don't get why I posted these pictures. The posters weren't the greatest. No, they were provocative. Okay, you sat there in front of that camera and did your one-two poses to show this and that in a very intimate way to get some money. Now, what happened is... Yes, you probably did feel uncomfortable. Maybe what happened, other people around you saw it and they started telling you about yourself. You know, it sounds like she didn't really telling us why she changed her mind. She makes it seem as if it was an innocent mistake that she accidentally sat in front of the camera and showed her ass and her titties out. And it looked so provocative that she didn't even know why she did it. Something backfired behind a closed door and she's probably too ashamed to do it it probably her parents 
probably saw it, probably her cousins, whoever it is, someone told her about herself. And that's what made her have to shut it down. Because there's no way you can tell me that you don't know why you did it, you just did it, and all these people made you feel uncomfortable. It had nothing to do with that. Because you was willing to show it in the first place. So my point is, she wanted to make some money, but something happened. And now she can't really go back doing what she was doing before and decided to prove to whoever she wants to prove that she's a changed female and Jesus saved her life. No point claiming that you now have found Jesus. Keep that for your prayers. I don't know why they need to always proclaim that they have a new way of life, that they have found him, they have found this. What does that do? It's words. Your action is what really proves it. If anything, you need to be saying this in your prayers to him that you have changed. No one needs to know this. If you really found Jesus, that'll be a conversation for you and Jesus, not for us. That's a conversation between you and him. What do we have to do with it? We ain't no one going to save you. It's him, is it not? So why are you telling us? And this is why it's BS. She's proving something to other people around her because they caught her red-handed and told her about herself and she couldn't deal with the consequences. Look at the rise in OnlyFans, you know? Like, look at that. And it's been pushed under this guise of female empowerment, right? There is, there is nothing empowering about selling parts of your body online for money, right? Because you take away the money, you're not doing it. So you're not doing it because it empowers you. You're doing it for the money. Why are you doing it for the money? Because you value money so much that you will compromise on your values, that you will do things that are not healthy and are not from a healthy place. This girl found out that her dad was her biggest OnlyFans customer. Carla Ramirez was getting hundreds from an anonymous account on her OnlyFans. They would tell her to perform X-rated acts and even ask her to speak on the phone sometimes. But one day while listening to the man's voice, she heard a familiar voice talking on the phone in the background. It sounded just like her mother and it turns out that her biggest customer was her biological father. I am here to talk to you today about the truth behind the OnlyFans creators. We're all individual, we all have our own story, but I wanted to talk about my experience, my thoughts, and what I've noticed since creating content on the platform since 2019. I wanted to give you a bit of background about me first. As I said earlier, my name is Alo. I'm 25 years old. I'm from a small town in North Wales and I've been doing OnlyFans content now for about four years. I myself got into OnlyFans scene out of choice. I'd always had an idea that I wanted to create a kind of content called glamour modeling, and I chose to pursue that through a website known as OnlyFans. For those of you who don't know what OnlyFans is, it is a freelancer website created and designed for people to create their content, upload it, and charge for it. The site has over 170 million registered users, with 500,000 new users joining every day. Although the site is there to serve any platform, anyone, anything, it's most famously known for its porn industry, where many people just share their own pornographic content and charge for it. So why am I here talking to you today about my porn industry insight? To put it quite simply, it's the break the stigma. So with the popularity and in the rise of the platform, the stigma and criticism of sex work has also risen. Sex workers are criticised, shamed and alienated from their society just because of our job. No other job creates the same reaction or fosters such strong opinions. As with any other job, there may come a time where you want to move on to other career opportunities. However, with a stigma attached to this OnlyFans jobs, you're encouraged to stay in the sex industry. If OnlyFans or any other platform doesn't work out for you, or if you decide to change jobs, it's infinitely more difficult because of that connection with the sex work industry. For example, last year I put forward that I would donate a certain amount per calendar, per sale to a certain charity but then the charity pulled out due to me having an OnlyFans account. Later, I Googled it 
and turns out that people had done naked charity calendars with this charity in question. So I was going to be wearing underwear in my calendar, so even though I was wearing more clothes, the stigma of OnlyFans hit again. So even the opportunity to do something good was taken away from me. Stigma has real-world implications. It dehumanises us. It makes people treat us without respect. My future career opportunities are in danger. My personal safety is in danger. And for what? Because you disagree with my career choice? Despite it being 2022, the stigma stems from our society's taboo to talk about sex. And because of this awkwardness and stigma around sex, the way we talk about sex, especially in regards to women and sex, it means that, that my line of work has many real-world repercussions. Sure, when I first got into the industry, I understood and accepted that I would probably get some judgment. My parents, for example, I didn't really expect them to be very keen on me posing in my underwear, but they, they accepted it. I expected judgment from certain people, maybe some friends, a colleague or an ex, maybe someone on my uni course. But what is something that no one really prepares you for? is the online hate. When I set out to make OnlyFans, I kind of knew that I was inviting people to see me in my underwear, which I didn't mind. I feel empowered in my underwear, I feel sexy and I feel confident. What I didn't invite people to do was to open up their mouths and comment on my body, like if I was good enough or not, if I was slim enough or not, if they fancied me or not. I didn't invite this. So here are some examples of lovely comments that I've had. Uh, this one's my favourite. Um, I've all, I, <laughs> my boobs are real, but I guess we're just like glad that he does recycle. I don't know. But the online problems for OnlyFans models doesn't really stop there either. You may or may not know that it is a crime in the UK to reshare explicit images that you've either been sent or have been shared with you under a specific understanding. For example, if your partner sends you a nude, you can't legally reshare that. And I should hope that you wouldn't do that anyway. This goes the same with OnlyFans content. If you purchase a piece of content of me in my underwear, or like a full pornographic scene from someone else's OnlyFans, it is illegal for you then to screenshot it or screen record it and reshare it somewhere else. Whether that be to TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit, wherever even in a group chat with your friends to discuss how hot or not something is, it is illegal. So why do we see Ray shared OnlyFans content, especially from the biggest creators on the platform, outside of the platform? And why don't we see the same public outcry that we do when it's a case of revenge porn with a couple? Is that again because of how we speak about sex workers and how we perceive them? Which brings me on to me. I'm a human being, I'm a person, I'm a woman, a businesswoman and a creator. Why is it that my line of work seems to directly link with the perception that I wouldn't be or shouldn't be upset by someone sharing like explicit content that I've shared with them privately? Why do I have less of a right over the glamour shots that I choose to share than Tracy from what works in Morrison's like three doors down from me? But why is that? So my TED talk, OnlyFans, the truth behind the model. A lot of you would have come here today with a preconception about me as an OnlyFans model. And some of you would have just come here totally not liking me just because of my job. And what I want you to take home with you, not just about me, but any sex worker that you come across from here on out, is that is our job. Our job isn't who we are. Just like Larry the Bin Man isn't just a bin man, and Greta Thunberg isn't just a climate change activist. I want you to remember that yes, I've got a law degree. I've got a qualification in plumbing and plastering. Ruven in or crewid moyav only fans in Hermri, Ruven do yesog, a Ruven thunas business. I am a huge football fan. I'm a passionate supporter of my local club, which is now owned by these guys. <laughs> and I'm a passionate supporter of my country. My name is Alo Hav, and I am so much more than an OnlyFans creator. So where do we go from here? First and foremost, I want you to remember that sex workers are just human. We're just trying to navigate the world in the same way that everyone else is. We have feelings, we have other things going on, 
and we are so much more than our job title. Once you've done this, hold your peers accountable. If you heard your friends talking badly about a sex worker in a derogatory way, dismissing their entire personhood just based on how they make a living, then call them out on it. If you hear about people downloading and sharing the photos and videos uploaded onto OnlyFans or any other platform, even privately, without the creator's consent, then call them out on it. It is far too common for our personal photos and videos to be shared on group chats, on social media, without our consent. So please call them out on it. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> so, the stigma about females in sex and the line of work they do. Modern females want to say it's a taboo to speak about, despite it being 2022. The real question is, how does this help society? How does X work help the generation after us? You want society to accept what you choose to do with your body and sell it online for men to devour behind the screen? Revenge porn and sharing content is completely different with work and networking relationship. When they decide to withdraw any business with you, everyone has a right to do what they want to do. Just the same way you had the right to do what you wanted to do. Modern females don't understand as a whole. OnlyFans model, non-OnlyFans model. This is where they don't understand. They are only concerned with what they can get right now. But they don't seem to see the effect of what they're asking. How corrupt it can be in the future. She's asking for people to accept OnlyFans model. She's asking for more business revenues. She's asking for more of a status that won't have a stigma so entitled to her and what she has done on OnlyFans. But the problem here is that when that becomes normalised and more accepted, she doesn't want to come to terms with what it will do for the future generation. And how that is actually very corrupting to the future generation. Because when you accept something that really is no good. Because there's nothing good with selling yourself and your body for a man to do what his business behind the screen. There's, there's nothing productive about it. There's nothing positive about it. And there's nothing really proud about it either. There's no value. You're degrading yourself. Self-respect is low to zero. So I don't understand how you want these changes to happen, but when these changes do happen, there ain't going to be no positive change about it. And that's where they don't understand. They think their rights have been taken away from them, but they're not. Because rightly so, you did what you wanted to do. So it's rightly so that people don't want to work with you. People don't want you around who they know. People don't want their children to even be around you because what you do is not conducive for society nor for their children nor for any business there's nothing positive about any industry that allows you to sell yourself for money they are not role models they're not influencers that people want to be they expect society and people to change themselves for them but what they're really asking for is for a more corrupted society so they can live in. What they're really asking for is a prosperous life in a demoralizing society. What's OnlyFans? What's OnlyFans? It's whores. It's a donation page for whores. Are we, un are we unclear about OnlyFans? It's a GoFundMe for sluts. We call them sex workers. You know what sex workers used to be called? Whores. It's, I don't understand what I'm saying. I'm just saving syllables. If you have an OnlyFans, God bless you. I hope you make a lot of money as a digital whore. That's fine. A lot of people are digital comedians. You were a digital whore. You think real whores look at OnlyFans the way stand-up comedians look at YouTube comedians? Like, this motherfucker ain't about that life. He can't do what I do. He can, I can do what he do. He can't do what I do. I'm a fucking warrior out here. I do my shit in person, face to face. Look motherfuckers in the eyes when I get nutted in them. To me, you're the struggling guy. 